Problem 11. You wish to place a charge at point A, which when released will move away from the two charges as shown, and then determine the speed of the charge when it gets to infinity. The rectangle is 14 by 25 centimeters. Okay, I think, I assume 14 is a small one. Yep, high and 25 is wide. Okay, so I'm going to start off by writing this just for future reference. 14, I'll, and I'll note this is centimeters. And this guy down here will be 25 centimeters. All right, got it? In order for the charge placed at A to move to infinity, you must use proton or electron. All right, so this is, that's going to be determined by the force. Force equals kq over r squared times another q by the electric field. The electric field, um, I'm just going to write this out before I fail too terribly. Force equals E times q, where like, the electric field is a vector and force is a vector. And E equals K. I'm going to call this K2. That way I can call this guy K1 over R squared. And it will be either away or towards. So the idea here then is if something is closer, since R is on the bottom, it'll have more influence. And also if Q is stronger, it'll have more influence. So the 10 is both stronger and closer. So the, it's going to the direction, the um, overall influence will be determined by uh, this charge right here. So to have it repel, because we want it to move away, it's going to have to be a proton. Now if we want to be more exact and figure out, um, hmm. if we want to be more exact and figure out precisely, then we can do the calculations, but it's not necessary here. Since we know that uh, 10, it's both stronger and closer, it will have the most influence. So to have it, the positive charge be rejected or um, thrown away, pushed away, pushed away, we're going to have to use a charge of the same uh, charge as the one that's dominated. Lots of words, proton. All right, when released, approximately which direction will the charge initially accelerate? Imagine an analog clock. Got it. With clock face placed at A, with 12 o'clock being upward. OK, so it makes sense. So the direction it's going to accelerate initially will be de determined by force, because force equals mass times acceleration. So acceleration will be the same direction as force, which will be in the same direction as the electric field. So what we want to do is we want to find out the net electric field. So E net, mm, oh, oh, that's a terrible net, equals. All right, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, factor out the K. Yep. And then I'm, I'm going to call this guy 10 and that guy negative 5, which seems reasonable. So for actually, I'm not going to do these guys together. I'm going to do them as separate. And then I'm going to combine them later. So I'm going to call this EY. There we go. And I'm going to call this uh, Q here will be 10 times 10 to the negative ninth. And I'm going to completely ignore signs, and the distance between them will be 0.14. So I have 0.14 and squared. And this will give us, so they don't actually ask for the final, um, it doesn't matter, okay. Hmm, that's nano? Nano, all right. So I'm going to do this as 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. times, and that's k, times the charge, which is 10 times 10 to the negative ninth. I could have just canceled out the 10 to the ninth and 10 to the negative ninth, but I didn't. That's okay. Quantity, 0.14 squared. 
And that gives us a huge, oh, actually it is a pretty reasonable number. Hmm, that's a, eh, I guess electric fields are normally big. So I'm going to do 4586. 4, 5, 8, and 6. There we go. And that is newtons per meter. I think that's what a electric field is. What's electric field measured in? I think it's newtons per meter. I'm not too worried. Okay. Now we're going to do electric field in x direction. Same concept. So I'm not even going to write out the numbers. But this time, we're going to have 5, negative 5. I'm just going to write 5, because all I'm going to care about here is the magnitude. And then 0.25. So instead of 5 times 10, uh, 10 times 10 to the negative 9th, I'm going to have 5 times 10 to the negative 9th. And then the distance will be 0.25. And I have 719. So seven, one, nine. Well, at least it looks like it, I was right about the um, y direction have significantly more influence. So now I need to find direction. So the positive charge is going to push it down. So I'm going to call this negative. I'll put a negative over here just to kind of, eh, I probably shouldn't do it that way. All right, so I'm going to draw it like this, four, five, eight, six. And I would draw, I'd do it like this on a test. That way, the instructor doesn't look at your math and be like, take points off because um, your math is wrong even though you know what you're doing. All right? And now the positive charge here is going to be, let's say it's positive charge. Yep, positive This positive charge here is going to be pulled towards the negative 5, so it's going to be to the left. Left. And that's going to be 719. All right. So I am, I wouldn't call it cheating, but I minus 4586, 4586, okay. You could do the whole um, uh, arc tangent and figure out theta, which, you know, can totally do, and is the right way to do it, especially if you're doing the test. But I am going to use uh, Wolfram to do it for me. So this has theta as negative 98.9. I'm going to so I'm going to say negative 99. Hmm. Okay. So negative 99 degrees. Okay. So negative 99 degrees is we have a clock face, and it's 10 degrees past. Um, oh, 10 degrees past 6 o'clock. So each, so there's 360 degrees total. There's 12 numbers. So I would say each number is 30. Hmm, looks like I got. So it's going to be. 10 degrees past 6. So it's going to be like 31, 32. So it's going to be pointing mostly at 6, but not quite. So for this guy, I would say you're probably not given an option for 6.3 o'clock. So you probably round it to 6 or round it to 7. Um, Hopefully your numbers work out better than mine did, but that's how that's how you go with it. Okay. Now, <coughs> the real question. I guess those are all real questions, but another question: How fa how fast will the charge be moving when it gets to infinity? Okay. So now this guy is asking about potential. Potential is the way I like to call it is electric potential, potential energy difference, and potential voltage is specifically measured in joules per coulomb. A volt is a joule per coulomb. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to find the voltage difference between the two and um, add them up. So voltage equals 
k q over r. This is voltage for a point charge. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about signs because I already know it's going to be moving away. So the idea here is it has potential energy when it's close to these guys, and then it's going to convert that potential into kinetic energy. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the, the potential energy, and I'm going to use 1 half mv squared to then find the um, kinetic energy. So between a and 10, so I'll call this guy 10a, is this. And then between 5 and a, I'll call 5a, it's going to be that. And we're going to add them together. So voltage 10 plus voltage 5 equals, all right, see what we got here. So I can factor out the k. So I'll have k times q10 over r10, which is the radius between a and 10, and q5 and r5. And I know they're going to be minus just because it's going to be in opposite directions. If for some reason I got a negative number here, I would just flip the sign and make it a positive number. I'd assume I did some math error somewhere. All right, so this guy, 8.99 times 10 to the ninth times, now we got a quantity here. So we're going to have, um, so these are both going to be nanocoulombs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the 10 to the negative ninth, and that's going to cancel this 10 to the negative, 10 to the ninth right there. So it's going to have 8.99 times 10 divided by 0.14 minus 5 divided by 0 0.25. 0 0.25 is the distance between the 5, five nanocoulomb charge and point A. And the answer we get is 462 joules per coulomb equals 462 joules per coulomb. Okay? So now I'm gonna, we're going to have to do... Um, I want to convert that into a energy. So this is uh, potential. So the way to convert potential energy or voltage and potential energy is potential energy, which is that guy measured in coulombs, times voltage times Q. This is why I like to call it joules per coulomb because then it's obvious, oh, you just multiply it by coulombs. So I'm going to say that this implies, and I'll look up our proton because we know we're going to use a proton. Find out what the charge of a, I don't know what the charge of a proton is. It's 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th, or is it 17th? Uh, let's see here. Charge, charge radius, electric charge. 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th. Okay. So I'm going to take this answer and multiply it by 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th. And this will give us the number of joules involved, which will be very small. Right, 7.4 times 10 to the negative 17th. Applies potential energy equals 7.4 times 10 to the negative 19th. All right, so this is the potential energy. Specifically, this is the potential energy that is converted to kinetic energy i.e. 1 half mv squared. Hmm. Move a little bit over. Yeah, I'll get rid of that guy. 1 half mv squared. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for v squared. So v squared, I think they ask for speed. How fast is it traveling? How fast? Fast is generally speed related. All right. So I'm going to take the, the number we just got, multiply that by 2, and then we are going to divide by mass. Divided by, and then mass of the proton, 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27th. 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27th. Okay. That looks right. And, oh, buddy. Oh, okay, makes sense. So we have 8.87 times 10 to the 10th. 
7 times 10 to the 10th. Now my first thought is any, things can't move faster than 10 to the 8th because 2.99 times 10 to the 8th is the speed of light. If you're going faster than that, then you probably made a calculational error. But that's velocity squared. So it's actually probably going to be somewhere times 10 to the 5th, which is the answer you typically get for these sort of problems. So it's a good sign. So I'm going to say 2.98 times 10 to the 5th equals 2.98 times 10 to the 5th. Mm -hmm. uh, that's even worse. I'll just leave it at that. All right, because I'm going to rewrite it down here anyway. 2.98 times 10 to the 5th, and that's meters per second. So I guess the way you'd probably actually write this is 2.98 E5. Oh, there we go. Excellent. And that is the final problem. I think you guys got a midterm coming up. Wish you the best, and uh, see you guys next time.